The Aussie dollar hit a 10-year low against the US dollar yesterday, 7th of August 2019. It fell to less than 67 US cents after the Reserve Bank of New Zealand slashed interest rates by half a percent, cutting their official cash rate to a record low of 1%, the same as Australia's. Craig James, chief economist at Comsec, said that although the low dollar may be a headache for Australians travelling overseas, it would be a welcome relief for the Reserve Bank of Australia. He wrote, The weaker Aussie dollar will increase the attractiveness of Australian goods on the global stage and against imported products. Rabobank's Michael Every commented on the recent global currency wars. He wrote, we got the RBNZ governor, Adrian Orr, basically promising to do whatever it takes. More rate cuts, negative rates, quantitative easing, you name it. There will be no keeping the powder dry. As a result, the New Zealand dollar plummeted below 64 US cents like a Kiwi trying to fly, and the Australian dollar fell to a decade low below 67 like a wombat trying to fly. Which is a great analogy for the RBA, actually. Chris Weston, head of research at Pepperstone, had concerns regarding the New Zealand rate cut. He wrote, If you want to get ahead of the curve, then the RBNZ does this better than most, and is not one to mess around. One questions if this is a message that they are genuinely worried, and if so, should we be too? Other news is reporting that the construction industry in Australia is in a deep recession. The Australian Industry Group, Housing Industry Association's Australian PCI, fell by 3.9 points in July to 39.1. This is the sharpest decline in activity in six years. Scores of less than 50 indicate a contraction in the industry. This is the 11th consecutive month of contraction in the Australian PCI. Head of Influence and Policy at the AI Group, Peter Byrne, spoke of the construction slowdown. He said, Looking ahead, conditions look more fragile than they have for some time, with new orders dropping further into negative territory, driven by particular weakness in the pipelines of new work in the housing and apartment sectors. Dr. Byrne also spoke of the contracting selling prices sub-index. He said, This negative reading indicates that rising input prices and other costs are not, on average, being passed on to customers, as profit margins continue to be squeezed for businesses in the construction industry. It's probably also no surprise that home loan approvals are down. Investor loan approvals are down to $4.37 billion, while owner-occupier approvals are down to $12.45 billion. Will all these recent Recent rate cuts have the desired effect of increasing people's desire to get into more debt? Time will tell, I suppose. Market economist at NAB, Tapas Strickland, spoke of the recent lending activity. He said, Overall, the data is consistent with anecdotes of inquiries picking up following the May election, though new lending activity is still around the lows last seen in 2013. Although not market moving, finance approvals are likely to be watched closely by the RBA in order to help assess whether recent cash rate cuts and APRA's recent easing of macro prudential is filtering through to the housing market and the economy in general. There's also the looming threat of the effects of a US-China trade war on the Australian and global economies. Experts are warning that the combination of a falling Australian housing market, global currency wars and the ongoing threat of a trade war could spell disaster for the Australian economy. Andrew Charlton, director at Alpha Beta and former economic advisor to Kevin Rudd during the global financial crisis, spoke of these recent economic concerns on ABC's AM. He said, We have a number of really important frailties in our economy, like very high debt levels, like the ongoing play out of a housing correction. It's only been this week that the RBA has downgraded our GDP growth. Australia is in a vulnerable position, and the prospect of an external shock caused by a trade war and a currency war could be very serious for us. Markets have been spooked because they've been forced to recognise there is little prospect of a quick deal to end the trade dispute. It's harder to see a rational economic solution when part of the causes of this dispute are geopolitical. I think the worrying thing is, we don't know how it will end. Australian Treasurer Josh Frydenberg seems to be one of the few people staying positive about the ongoing trade war. He told AM, We shouldn't overreact to these developments, but we should recognise that China's currency moves and the increase in US tariffs are an unwanted escalation. Right now, the Australian government would like to see cool heads prevail. We'll still deliver a surplus next year. We're still determined to do that. The Australian economy remains sound, despite some of the challenges we face domestically and internationally. 
What do you think? Is Mr. Frydenberg correct? Is the Australian economy sound? Despite trade wars, currency devaluations, interest rate cuts, and a construction industry in freefall? Or is he just lying to the Australian public?